This is uh, Jay Harwood's latest edition of Amazing Mets Conversation with my longtime friend Pat Hamlin, senior VP of communications for my favorite football team, the New York Football Giants. Pat, do you want to make you feel old? Combined, you and I have over 80 years of experience in in, in pro sports. It's you should open up something, right? It's scary. How, how about this? And I know you know this. I replaced... I, I've been at the Giants for 30 years. I replaced Ed Crow, who had been, who had been at the Giants for 28 years. For so for the last for better or for worse, for the last 60 years, the New York Giants have had two heads of PR, which is that's it goes to the stability of everything. You yes, know. But, Pat. You know I'm a gigantic Giant fan, a, a gigantic Mets fan. You're of course, the Giants giant feet. Have you always rooted for the Max? I know we go back. I mean, we at, at birth. No, no. I I grew up in the D.C. area. I grew up. Right. I grew up within ninety minutes of Washington and Baltimore. So I grew up a Washington. At that time, they were the Redskins, a Washington football team fan, right? And a Baltimore Orioles fan. So, and and when I was growing up, the Orioles, of course, played the Mets in the World Series, right? Yes, what, year, what, year, what year was that? 1969. Yeah, okay. So, anyway, so that, no, that was my background. Everybody thinks because I'm from Pennsylvania uh, that I was either a Steelers or an Eagles fan growing up. Well, I was three hours from each of those cities. I was only 90 minutes from Washington and Baltimore. So those were my teams growing up. And the Washington Senators in the National League. How did we first meet, Pat? I I, I, listen, I was going to First of all, isn't this amazing that two guys that can barely use their cell phones are, <laughs> are, 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 are talking to each other via this medium, right? Uh, it's crazy, man. I mean... I got to be honest with you. I was not a good pandemic person because I never, ever got used to talking to a screen, right? right? I, I, some people ha- adapted to it just like that, and I, I'm still not used to it. So, no, I'm, I'm, people have to help me. I can't hear you, Doug. That's one thing. I try my IT guys crazy here because you have to have a password to get into the computer. So I switch you off from every giant, Bookie Bowling, Greg Larson, uh, Bavaro, Taylor, um, Phil Sinner, I even threw a Bobby Clatter book at him. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I drive them crazy because all my passwords are all giant. And I forget Daryl Des, uh, <laughs> you know, Joe Morris. I mean, I, I don't remember what my Apple, my, I said, well, my Apple password is an old giant. But you, you, can't, can't, you can't remember which one. Now let me I ask. Can't remember which one? Let me ask you something. How, yes, sir. How, how many? How many of these podcasts have you done? What I'm trying to do, Pat, is not to do just the 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 the, the old Met place. Trying to branch out a little bit. People I have I can talk to without looking at notes. People I have a relationship with. That's why you know you and I go back a long way, and you know uh, you know it's easy to talk to you better. But I, I remember. Was it was the two thousand Super Bowl? Was that the first time we met, or were maybe or, 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 it could it could have been? Were you you, you I, were in Tampa, obviously, right? Yeah, I and I made one of my big mistakes before the game. I I invited I mean, Strahan, Tiki, and Kerry Collins came to the game, and I mistakenly put Kerry Collins' number is twelve on the uniform, but it was five, right? Yes, five. Correct. So yeah. I, had, I had to get him. A, I had to get him another uniform. So I, I but, think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, he, they they came. They came to a Mets game. Came right? to the game. Yeah. Pat, Pat, let me just all over the place. Are you surprised at the conglomerate that Eli's become now? You know, I always saw him as a quiet guy. You know, and his brother Peyton was doing all this stuff. But are you surprised where he's become? No. <laughs> I, I mean, a, a little bit. But you clearly, clearly, he was saving it for for once he was done playing. Listen, now he's beer commercial. What isn't he doing? But now you have to understand that family 
is, is pretty impressive but, uh, across the board, right? And he is uh, uh, he is a, a chip off the old block, but he's uh, just like as a player, uh, he's his own guy. Like he and Peyton, uh, or you're comparing apples and oranges, except with, with one notable exception. They're both incredible competitors, right? One of them, though, wears it on his sleeve. And the other one, Eli, you can't, you, you don't want to play poker with him, right? Because you don't know what the hell he's thinking. Or you don't know what his mood or his emotion is. But I can tell you this, it, as much as uh, Peyton wears his competitiveness on his sleeve, Eli has the, he has the same temperament. You just don't see. Uh, what I always admired about Eli's interviews was, was win or lose, you couldn't tell. You know, he would be there and he wouldn't give you a whole lot, but he would give you enough. How did you, what was it working with him, Pat? When we first drafted him, right, I said to him, I said, listen, you come from a, a family that knows this business inside and out. You have plenty of people that are going to advise you on how to handle things. If you need advice, I'm not going to be another voice in your ear. I'm going to watch everything you say, everything you do. And if you need something from me, all you got to do is ask, right? So right off the bat, I told him, you have enough voices and enough resources on how to navigate your professional life especially when it comes to the media. And I said, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to add to the mix, but I'll be clearly, obviously I'll be a resource for you if you need it. And uh, you know, what did he play? 15 years or right. Right. And never got it. Yeah. Mark never was on a DL one time. Right. Right? <laughs> exactly. But my, my point is, is in all that time, maybe two or three times, did we really have to have a conversation about how to how to handle something, right? And it can I ask you, how was he when not to bring up something, I mean when when he got benched. Yeah, he was he wasn't a happy camper, right? And and uh but he handled it with his typical class and dignity. Uh but it, in his own understated way, he made sure that people knew he was pissed off about what had just occurred, right? And so... Another guy. It, yeah, sorry. No, but, and, and that's the way you always handle Here, Here's the other thing, Jay. When we... Uh, so when we lost on Monday, first of all, right after the game, win, lose, or draw, he was always there, right? But when we lost the game on Monday, when we opened the locker room up to the media, he would always be there. If we won... He wouldn't be there because he'd want his teammates to do the talking, right? But if we lost, he felt an obligation to stand at his locker and talk. You know, it was like that too. David Wright, the exact yes. same way. He hated talking about himself too, but when he he always took the bullet when we lost 12 to 1, 14 to 1. When I got that to the locker room, I could always count kind of number five being there every time. Well, that's what, that, 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 and that's what leaders do, right? That's what leaders do. Listen, listen. If we lose, it's on me. If we win, it's because of everybody else in the room, and that's how they that's how they demonstrate that. But that's what leaders do. Michael Strahan. I mean, talk about a guy who's all over the place. Yeah, you, you know what? It, it, you, you talk about Eli and what he. What he has become, and, and Strahan, you know, he he led the way of this current generation of giants. And of course, you've been around long enough to remember what the Frank Giffords and the Pat Summerall's and those right. guys did. You, you right. know, you've been through generations. The way our players have capitalized on being in the New York market in terms of their post playing careers has been. Phenomenal, you know. We've got Tiki now, who just got a new yeah, promotion, right? You know, and, you know, and, and I mean, Strahan could be on shows with two two different channels, you know. And, you yeah, know. yeah, and guess what? He uh, he has a piece of the action on all those shows, right? But you know what I like about him? I, I like his loyalty. 
even when he's on Fox, he lets his fandom go. He's not afraid to say he's rooting for the Giants. He goes to give pep talks to the team. You know, I mean, I saw you had last week, you had uh, your coach Parcells and, and Michael Rout. I like the fact that he's gotten big, but like, he hasn't forgotten his roots. No. You know? and, yeah. And, I mean, to agree, I mean, is he good with you, Pat? For yeah, the game? yeah, no, he, he, he listen, he, he's all, he's always been good. Now, when he was playing, he had his ups and downs with the media. I remember a couple of instances. I do, I do. But, but he, obviously, he grew through all that to become the successful businessman and media mogul that he, that he is now. So, Pat, you know, you and I are a lot in different ways. I think we both have the personal approach. I did, I read a couple, a couple of weeks ago Tom Conklin's book, and he gave you credit. Uh, but he could always go to you. I mean, I, I try to do it with my managers to not be overbearing, and give some advice. And you had a special relationship with Coach Conklin. Well, let, let, listen, and you, you, you and I would agree on this. We're we're in a people business, right? Yeah. And, and in our roles, we have we have to establish trust in the relationships. First of all, you have you have to bring a little something to the table. Right, you bring more to the table than I than I do, but you got to no, you, you got to bring something to the table. You have to establish a trusting relationship, and the the people that we work with have to know that we're doing our job right. And so, it's all about people. At the Giants, it starts with the mayors and the tishes, and it filters all the way through the organization. Which, by the way, just like your place. Our place in 30 years that I've been there has probably quadrupled in terms of the number of people that work within the organization. It's unbelievable, Pat. It's unbelievable. <laughs> no, no. Hey, don't get me started on that. But anyway, yeah. but anyway, it, the fact it still, if you're going to be successful, the, the one common thread that has to continue to run, to, regardless of how many people you bring into the company, it's got to be about the people. It's got to be about relationships, right? And it's got to be about hiring good people and allowing them to do to do their job, right? And so, when when you work with, listen, managers and head coaches, you're, there's not many more stressful occupations than that. And so, they've got to have people that they can rely on and trust to give them to be honest with them. And give them sound advice when they need it, right? But you know, I, I'll never forget. Tom Coughlin said to me one time that Bill Walsh had said to him that you know when you're sitting in the big chair, there's nobody to make you laugh, right? Like nobody, nobody comes in just to bullshit with you and and make you laugh, right? And he said, "Who's going to make me laugh?" I said. Here, here he is. Out. That was my role too, Pat. I understand. Yeah, my calculation: you w w work with seven head coaches. I think maybe I'm off. It, but, uh, listen, over the course of the last few years, that number that number jumped. I was Do you. I was I work with fourteen to fifteen managers in my time. Yeah, and I find it always very sad. And the people outside don't understand that you, you and I build relations with these guys. We have to let it. When Willie Randolph gets fired, when Terry Collins gets fired, it hurt me to have the conversation with him. I'm sure you were the same way with, you know, with, with the Joe Judges and, and, and uh, somebody else. Uh, uh, hey, uh, when, when McAdoo, Pat Shermer, Joe Judge, when when those guys get fired, right? There is listen. When Tom Coughlin left and those other guys got dismissed, you have survivor's guilt. Right, and you look yourself in the mirror, and you feel guilty. What well, you've done differently, right? Yeah, exactly. You feel like you let them down, right? Because you have great. No question. First of all, they're good at what they do. They're good people, and they work their asses off. And now you're looking at yourself, and those poor sons of guns are out the door, and you're looking in the mirror. You're still here, and you're asking yourself, "What the hell could I have done?" And the public doesn't get that part of it. The, the people, the fans don't get that part no, of it. You know, I'm with you. You see, you hire a new coach to, you know, great coach of the year. 
you never been a head coach, I'm sure. He came to you a lot with the New York market a lot, market about. And did you, was he receptive to some of the stuff you said? Yeah, but he, he is. Uh, here, here's one thing, and, and I'm sure you've used this line a thousand times. The first thing you tell people you work with who are going to be dealing in the public eye is you have to be yourself. You can, don't try to don't try to be anybody else. Okay, and, and Dave is that he is himself when he's dealing with the media. He's been he's been in the game and it has really been a student. You, you know what impresses me is how somebody like Dave prepares for this moment, right? And you can tell that. He prepared, he knew he was going to get his shot, or he, at least he believed he was going to get his shot at some point. And for years, he was preparing himself for that moment. And, and it showed, right? The way he handled the team, the way he handled the media. Uh, you can tell he was a student of his profession. And, and by the way, his profession today is not the same as what it was even 10 years ago. Oh, his, no question. His, 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 his end of the business has changed dramatically, right? And so, but, but we're, we're very, we're fortunate in that, you know, Joe Shane, our general manager, and Dave had a prior relationship before they got here, right? And so th they arrive at the Giants with a common vision, a you know, a common objective, a common way of going about things. And I'll be honest, uh, it's rare to see a GM and a head coach who are so aligned in, in that way, right? There's always, you know, when, when you have two people who've never worked together, right, who come together and work in those positions, you know, there's a real feeling out process about how to go about things. Well, we're fortunate. These two guys showed up and they didn't they, they didn't have to go through a feeling out process because they knew that they knew each other. Right. And they had worked with each other. Basically, we have our spring training. How are your seasons divided up? I mean, with the OTAs and rookie camps, just give me a quick synopsis. Now, the There's not, it, l listen, I don't want to sound like old fuddy duddy, but when, when I first got in this business back in the in the NFL back in the late 80s. The season would end. There would be no chatter about the NFL or or the team until right before the draft. You know, now we have mock drafts for six, six for six weeks leading up to the draft. The, 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 the first mock draft when I started that you would see would be on the more it'd be in the newspaper on the morning of the draft would be a mock draft, right? And and then we'd have the draft. And then we'd have a little rookie mini cam. And then we'd be, it'd be silence again for a couple months until we had a mini camp, right, in June. And then, then training camp. Now it is one continuum of activity, right? So listen, the players get a couple months off right after the season. Then they come back for voluntary workouts, right? And we, we were fortunate that. Almost all of our players were here throughout the whole spring. Uh, and it's a progressive, the off season is progressive. You go from strength and conditioning for a couple of weeks to doing some limited on field work to doing a little less limited on field work. And then you have your uh, mandatory mini camp, right? And th then it's done. Right, tell me, how did you handle the Daniel Jones thing when he came here? You know, well-spoken young man, a giant, some giants that didn't, why was he drifting so high? And all the press comments I've had, he's never misspoke, always said the right thing, you know, even killed. And now he has a nice contract and, uh, you know, hopefully keep going in the playoffs next year. Listen, he, he he's like, and I know when we first drafted him, people wanted to point out the similarities in terms of, personality and that kind of thing with Eli and sometimes that's overblown but the fact of the matter is is he is a lot like Eli 
in terms of just having a basic instinct on how to handle himself, right? And and honestly, even though in the world we live in now, you can't completely ignore the outside noise. It's impossible to do. I think that he has trained himself to to do that, right? And th- and he had that when he got here. He he was not he was not going to be affected by what people on the outside. Pat, I've been a giant fan since 1958. I go back to uh, Alan the horse and meet you running at me in 1917 when we lost to the Colts in overtime. For me, the, my greatest moment is uh, was the 1714 14 game against the Pats. Burris in the corner. I was sitting in uh, in, in Phoenix in the corner right by my side. I mean, is that one or two? Is there, you have a different game, or is that your game too? Oh my gosh. It, well, it's hard. It, it's hard to beat that game when you're go, when you're going in against a team that's going to for history uh, to be eighteen and zero. And it, but as you well know, we played them in the final regular season game, thirty eight thirty five. We yes, lost on on, sa- on Saturday night in Giant Stadium, and to a person. Our players walked off that field that night. Okay, right? They 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 said, "Listen, if we get these sons of guns again, we will get them the next time." So we 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 came, even though we got beat, and it was a hell. It was if if you didn't really care who won, or even if you did, it was a entertaining football game, right? And it, it was it was a shootout, which of course the Super Bowl ended up being the exact opposite. Of that. You know what gets lost in history too? The uh, the, the, the twenty one seventeen game uh, a couple of years later. I remember Manningham's catch along the sideline. You know, I, I mean, I forget with two minutes it was really late in the game. Yeah, right. I mean, but that that catch kind of gets overlooked. Um, in, in you in, sound in like you, you sound like Darius Slayton for whatever reason. I happened to be looking at Twitter yesterday. And yeah. he, he, Darius Slayton said exactly what, and, and he's right. Like everybody talks about what a great throw it was, and it was a tremendous throw. The catch was every time you watch it, it's it's still amazing, right? I mean, he's got people bearing down on him, and he's got to keep his feet in bounds, right, and catch the ball. And it, it was a hell. And of course, those guys on the Patriots sideline were all all waving incomplete. Well. No, it wasn't. It was complete. And in the helmet play with Tyree, for me, the fact that Eli was able to stay up and not get down, you know, and catch a great catch. It was a, just a great game. And well, you know what? You, what I love about that play is when Eli and his offensive linemen are talking about it and uh, Eli's pointing fingers at everybody who missed a block <laughs> on that play. But, yeah, no, he was – he's got – eight. Eli has some athletic ability. Yeah. I mean, people say, I mean, I don't know when he comes up for the Hall of Fame, but I mean, just those two late drives and, you know, I mean, they, to me, that would guarantee him a lot. What's your feeling on? I know you keep you're, you're preaching. You're, you're preaching to the choir. You're preaching to the choir. I don't, I don't know what the, I don't know what the numbers are, but I got to believe that every quarterback that is a two time Super Bowl. Envy is in the Hall of Fame, right? But, 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 Patsy, I mean, you excited about this year? I mean, uh, yes, yeah, very much so. We, we had, we had a good offseason. We had a, another good draft. Uh, we added a lot of key pieces in free agency. And, and the most important thing is we have a, fa- with Joe Shane and, and Dave's, we have a foundation place that we can, that we can build on. Right. And uh, but I love Dave's approach because last year doesn't mean anything, but the foundation is still there. Right. The foundation, the most important thing about last year, listen, making the playoffs for the first time in several years was important. But the, the biggest thing is that the foundation has been laid to continue to progress and build. So, yes, I want to thank you for helping me get an upgrade for years. I've been going to the game. And I got tired of people standing up in front of me. So you put me in touch. And I, right now, I'm the 50. I mean, you know, I don't do a lot of traveling, Pat. I don't go to Europe. 
I would to you. Oh, yeah, and, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I, was, I, I was starting to make notes about the games I know you had been to on the road. I said in, in Chicago, in, in Europe, I was going to go, it was against the card, you know, I, was, I forget what it was, I was just going to go to watch a game and come back, and my friends said, you can't go to London and not do anything. Just go. So they convinced me, I, we spent eight eight days in Paris and Normandy, but I did see the giant game. They made me go, I was having a two-day trip, go to the game and come back, but, it, you know, but, but I, you know. That was Linda, Mar uh, Barbara, and Mark that said, "No, no, no." Yes, right? yes, yes. We've been we've been all over, but uh, I'm excited about to see you. I'm excited about our friendship, Pat. And, uh, you know, I hope to see you soon. Hope to see you before you get crazy. It, it's an it's an honor. And the reason I asked you about how many podcasts you've done is I'm wa I'm wondering if this isn't the last one because you scraped the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> Pat, listen, this this is thing. What I, I don't like to look down on my nose, how many home runs did he hit? I like to do these things with friends, people I can BS with, tell stories about. That's what, you know, they don't want to hear Daryl Strawberry hit 22 home runs. I want to talk about, you know, the, the other stuff, you know, what we're doing. And this is what I enjoy doing, talking about Giants football. But if you, I hope oh, nobody from the Mets is listening, but if you walked into my house, you would think I work for the football Giants. I have pictures of Bill Marcel and Eli. Michael Strayan to have the catch. I have a Frank Gifford picture. Uh, I have a Charlie Tyler picture. Can you see that? Pat? Can you see that? I can't wait. It's it, Super Bowl Forty Two, the victory victory formation, and it's ha it's hanging over the kitchen table. You know, most most people have like religious figures or beautiful portraits. <laughs> the, the, this is <laughs> you know what what is hanging here. Right. The, the one of my benefits of being a a, a Met and Giant fan, I struck up a little bit of a relationship with Coach Parcells. Uh, I did a podcast with him a, a year ago. I used to see him all the time in Jupiter with, I guess, Belichick and all those guys hung up there. But you know, Bill Parcells knows his baseball. He can tell you who the starters were in the '54 Giants. But thank you. All right, Jay. And you were all the best, Pat. I enjoyed it. It's an honor.